Are you interested in constructing your own model railroad? Well, why don't you stick around and see how I put together the main line on my in-scale model railroad, the Sagerhurst Secondary. Hello everyone, Joe from Central Jersey Conrail and Inscale. Welcome back. So this is episode 20 of our construction series. Uh, this time we're going to be putting together the main line from uh, Monmouth Battlefield State Park all the way down to the Big Helix. We're also going to be working on the arrival departure tracks for Browns Yard and getting everything up and running and tested on the main line for a continuous run. So why don't you go check out the video and we'll come back and we'll talk about it. And um, in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and move the camera because uh, I don't know about you guys, but um, I'm kind of getting sick and tired of shooting in the same spot looking at Lakewood over my shoulder. So, go take a look at the video and we'll talk to you after. Okay, so here we are getting started. So the first step, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that brown craft paper where I laid out my um, diagram and I'm gonna cut it up to make uh, templates to cut the plywood for the sub road bed. You know, I think this is a really a good idea uh, to consider because I found it just much easier by laying out my track plan and then cutting it and taking it up to the work area to cut the plywood. You know, the plywood comes back in the right shape that I anticipated. Okay, so here we are installing the sub road bed and as I'm going, I'm checking my level. Now, this area here is level because I'm going off of the Conrail uh, maintenance charts and there was no grade through English Town. But if you look just uh, around the curve there, there's actually a grade because I'm going off of the maintenance charts and there, there was a grade there. So consider that when you're putting in your sub row bed is to, to look at your grades at this point. Also, before you fasten down your sub row bed to your risers, also check your clearance on the outside edge that you saw I was holding a board up there just making sure that the sub road bed wasn't hanging out over into the aisle too much. So in previous construction areas uh, I was having problems with those uh, those screws protruding up above the plywood and I was watching a show one of those DIY home improvement shows and they were kind of making their own countersink just by using the um, Phillips screwdriver bit in the the drill so that's what I was doing back there and it's working out really well okay so here we are getting started putting the sub road bed in in the uh, Browns yard and this is for the arrival and departure tracks now I did go ahead at a later time and put in the classification uh, track area but I didn't cover that in this video um, I was just doing it because I had the material and I was in the mode of just cutting so I just went ahead and do it even though we're not going to do any tracks in the classification area at this time. Here I am getting started uh, for the sub bed for the Y and Jamesburg. As you can see, as we're working along, I'm not throwing those templates out yet. I'm still keeping it because it has my track plan on it. And once I transfer the track plan to the sub road bed, then I'll go ahead and throw it away. But I just kept it so you know match everything up as I'm going along. Here I'm joining the two pieces of sub road bed together, and the process that I developed for doing this using that plywood with the glue and then screwing it together, it's working out really well. Okay, here I am putting in the base for uh, Manalpan Lake and the spillway. And I wanted to do this so I could uh, get a reference for the height uh, for the bridge and the suburb bed for the bridge deck. Here I am cutting the opening in the uh, backdrop and the sheetrock for the uh, Amboy Secondary to go into the family. Room. 
All right, here I am taking the time to uh, put the track clan down on the sub row bed just so I have the lines to follow when I put the cork in. You know, most people buy a bottle of carpenter's glue and it sits in their garage for about 20 years and then it hardens up and they throw it away. Since I've started this layout, this is my third bottle of glue. Now we're installing the cork road bed. I like using the push pins to hold the cork down. It, it's they're very easy to use, and I just give them a little tap with that tack hammer. I don't, I'm not driving them in like nails or anything like that. Okay, here we are getting started with track work in English Town. Now, in the next scene, you'll notice I cut the track back to the middle of the Mammoth Battlefield section on the end of the peninsula because I wanted my joint on the straight section there. It just looks so good when you when your curve comes out nice and smooth the way you want it. So I'm just progressing along, getting track laid down in English Town. As you can notice, uh, there's the cork road bed. Uh, I went ahead and painted it. I know it's very controversial. I got a lot of comments of people saying it was a waste of time, but. Again, it's just something that I've always done and I like the way it, it comes out, so. You can see Caitlin down there. Just checking my joints with a car, make sure everything's nice and smooth. Okay, so here we are starting to glue the track down. Uh, this latex caulk works out really well. Um, I like it because if you want to move the track at a later time, you can you know, work the track with a little, uh, the putty knife and it'll come up. Now we're gonna bring the Campbell Soup Express in to uh, weigh the track down so it can dry. Again, more controversy, um, spackling my cork. And the reason I'm doing this is because when I sand it down with the rasp, it gets real rough. And by using the, that spackle, it smooths it out, seals it up, and it also seals up them cracks to make it easier for ballasting. installing the bridge in Jamesburg. That microengineering bridge is really nice. It's got a lot of detail. Here we are starting to install the uh, track work in uh, Browns Yard.
So this arrival departure area, you know, I had to scale it back because of the length of the yard. Uh, really would have liked to have more. Um, I know Brown's yard and the prototype had like six arrival departure tracks. But um, it's the way we have it laid out, it's going to work really well, I think. Alright, I'm putting cork down on the south end of the yard. I was really almost a little overzealous and went a little too far into the Y, so I just kind of left the cork like this because uh, I didn't want to get too far. I don't know which kind of turnout I'm going to use, if I'm going to use a Y or if I'm going to use a number 6. So we're just going to leave it like this until a later date. This is another little area that exceeded my expectations was this transition from the upper level of the helix into the yard. The, the sweeping curves that I was able to make really came out well. And watching trains go across there, it's really nice. Now I find the rasp just works so much better on the cork because I find when you're using sandpaper in a sanding block, it's just you're sanding, 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 and it's not making any progress. This this rasp really gets in there and, and gets it done. I feel it quicker. Here I am cleaning as I go because I just try and keep ahead of everything because it's just so much junk that accumulates. So I'm adding a piece of wood to the inside curve of the upper level of the helix uh, for the uh, switching lead to uh, go on. And you know, you'll see towards the end of the video, I really didn't need it. I could have kind of just scooted it through there, but you know, it's just better to safe than sorry. adding the cork for the switch lead. Now I'm spackling the tracks in the yard. Um, the other thing I found with, especially in this area with spackling was that, you know, when you get those pieces of cork that kind of stick up and they, you know, a little bumpiness, um, by spackling you can kind of control that and smooth it out a little bit. And don't forget, I'm not putting it on too heavy, it's real thin, and then I'll just come back when it's dry. I'm um, using that quick dry stuff about, a, about an hour later, and hit it with a sanding block, and take it down almost to where it's gone. Here I am installing the track here in the yard. Um, you know, at this point, I can like see the finish, and it's kind of hard to not rush. So I'm just trying to keep myself on course and not skip steps, so that everything was still nice and smooth like it was before.
right now I'm just concentrating on getting the main and the track one done and then I'll come back and do track uh, two and three later. Alright, I'm installing the feeders for the, uh, the yard tracks so uh, we can get some power applied and start testing stuff out. Probably should have moved that bus line a little closer in retrospect. Uh, I'm reaching under to use the suitcase connectors. There, there it is. Uh, power's applied and the trains are running. So uh, it's pretty neat. You know, while you're working, the train just rolls on by. I kind of forced you to take a little break and step back, so. Hey Jen, that day you came home from work and were wondering where all the soup cans went? Well, this is where they were. It was so nice working in that helix. So glad that I made it bigger than than I wanted. And that wraps up the work. Okay, everyone, so there you have it. That's how we put it together. So let, let's talk about it. So first, I, I just wanna say that, you know, right now I'm in a position where I'm extremely happy with the progress so far. Uh, and let me explain. First off, um, you know, for months and months now, uh, we've been working on this close to two years now, um, I've had a lot of apprehension and, and concern of, you know, is my track plan gonna work? Is Everything going to run the way I anticipated. Um, you know, is the continuous run all this extra effort that I put in with building the the, the two helix and SA junction and all that 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 camera work and all that is that is it going to be necessary? Because I was very concerned with are the trains going to be able to run 
good on a continuous basis. So, you know, after wrapping up construction, um, I did a live video on Facebook, I did a live video on YouTube, and then after I did those live videos, I went into some real testing and I brought up the OI-16. OI-16 I brought up was uh, 17 cars and uh, brought it into the uh, arrival departure area and you know, kind of just worked on it and, and figured out that yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna fit in uh, the yard and it's, it's gonna work the way I anticipate it. So, you know, now I'm standing here at this point and, and I'm happy because everything that I've done has been validated and it's gonna work the way I anticipated. Okay, so let's talk about Brown's Yard and the uh, arrival departure area that I built. So, you know, it's not conventional in the sense of when you look at a, co a, a conventional yard, you have the, the dual-ended ladder where the trains can easily come in and out. Um, and the reason that was was because, number one, um, in episode 19.5, I got some comments and suggestions that, you know, Putting that turnout at the end of the switch lead over top of the helix could lead to big problems down the road, you know, with reliability and the fact of any kind of derailments of getting back there. So then I, you know, I was kind of mulling over that for a couple days and then I really was like, you know, I, I don't want any more issues. So I decided to eliminate that turnout. So, and then what I did is I, in order to get trains from track one into the yard, instead of making a long backing maneuver, and you know, because without that, without a crossover to get from Maine into track two, trains would have to go all the way down into Jamesburg and then back into the yard. And I didn't think that was very prototypical and, and I didn't quite like the whole idea of, of making a long backing maneuver with a, with a big train of like 20 cars. So. I uh, moved in, moved that turnout up into the yard and made it a crossover. Um, so this way, when the OI-16 comes out of Newark and comes up the big helix heading southbound, it can hit the crossover and go into track two. Now it's not all gonna fit on the track two, so you're gonna still have to make some maneuvers, but the train's not gonna go all the way into Jamesburg. In fact, when you do the Amboy secondary, I can even use the Amboy secondary as kind of a south end switch lead. So. With that in mind, um, you know, OI-16 will fit in the arrival departure area. The other thing was, you know, I kind of liked the idea of making it a little complicated because I'm like, all right, now this is gonna be a little different. You know, it's not gonna be the normal yard. So now the, the yard master has to be on his toes and he has to think, hey, you know, when I pull the OI-16 in, the, the, in, the locomotives are gonna be trapped down at the southern end. How am I gonna get them back out? So that would then have to bring the yard crew out and work the tail end of the train to pull it apart and then clear that line so that they can get into the uh, the, the opposite running position to go back to uh, Oak Island. So, you know, when I got thinking about it, I'm like, oh, that, that adds more operational interest to the, to the scheme. Um, so it kind of worked out in my benefit for that respect. Okay, so since I made mention of it, um, uh, let's go ahead and talk about it, the Amboy Secondary. So, you know, in episode 19.5, I said that I was gonna open the hole up and I was gonna go ahead and stick the roadbed through into the family room and just have it sitting there. But then, you know, I got thinking about it, I'm like, you know, we're not gonna be getting to that until like October, November time frame. I don't want a big open hole into the family room. So, um, you know, after a second conversation with my wife, just to make sure that we're all on board with this, and um, she, you know, reluctantly is, is re agreeing on uh, on our second conversation. But so I decided, okay, we're just going to leave that hole sealed up. So I'm not going to go ahead and put the the sub road bed through. So that's why, if you look over my shoulder, you can see that um, that gator board. So I just mocked up the profile with the gator board just so I can get the opening and all the rest of the sub road bed done. So. Um, you know, at a later date, I can just come in with the with the plywood and put it in, tie it into the Y, and we'll be good to go. So the next thing I want to talk about is uh, the bridge at Jamesburg. So uh, this water feature is kind of like key. I really wanted a, a good, nice water feature here on the layout. So um, I think I keyed in on it when I took the, the Manalpan Lake and the spillway over at Jamesburg. Um, so that little kit uh, from uh, Microengineering. Um, yeah, that gave me a little issues, uh, but I was able to get it together, got it looking really good, painted up nice, and went ahead and installed it in. And this is was a first for me. Uh, I had to do a lot of research and watch videos and stuff on, on doing that bridge. I really apologize that the video didn't come out. I expected it to come out much better, but you know, it's just really hard when you're down here by yourself moving cameras and you're moving around trying to get work done. So 
Um, yeah, so what I ended up doing was laying the track across the opening and then once it was there, I let, I let the glue dry on, on, the, on the English Town side of the bridge and then I uh, cut it, fit the bridge in and then I picked up the track on the other side going down to the Jamesburg and then glued that and then let that sit. The big thing was I made sure to leave clearances on the, uh, the sides of the deck girder bridge uh, for the retaining wall for the canal and uh, also for bridge abutments. So um, that's kind of like the, the thing you got to remember when you're cutting your sub, ro sub road bed is make it a little wider than you in anticipate because if you make it wider, you can always backfill it per se with you know plaster and, and, and scenery and stuff. But if you make it too short, you're not, it's going to be very hard to cut the sub road bed and uh, get that bridge in there and make it fit good. And so with that being said, I've actually learned something big. Um, so way back in episode 15, part one, uh, we talked about uh, Lakehurst, how um, you know there was a, a wooden bent bridge in Lakehurst under the creek. And um, silly me, I didn't cut the roadbed for that opening because I was like, oh, well, we'll just go back and we'll cut it at a later date and you know uh, do that. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Um, you know, there's so many things you got to look at. I mean, I had difficulty getting the sub road bed to level up as it was, and I was putting it together that way. Uh, I'm very concerned with cutting that sub road bed over there in Lakehurst for that bridge, because um, I can just only have nightmares thinking about cutting it and it's just springing apart like, like a big giant spring. So I'm um, going to be making change over there. Um, it's not going to be an open bridge. It's, I'm just going to put it in a culvert. Um, and so that's going to change that. So I think that's a big learning, uh, big learning point here is uh, if you're going to plan on doing a water feature with a bridge, you got to make that opening because you know getting in there with any kind of saws or anything to cut the sub, sub row bed afterwards with the track already installed, it's you're just asking for problems. And so at this point, you know. Um, English Town's coming together and it's looking really good and, and that's this is the important part of the layout for me. The most, most important part of the whole layout is, is English Town to me because that's that's where I grew up. Um, you know, that's where I did a lot of rail fitting when I was growing up. Uh, you know, I was introduced to this whole concept of the, you know, the branch lines and the secondary lines and all, the, all that stuff. So I wanted to make sure um, I got English Town uh, to look the way I uh, want it. So, very happy with the way it's turning out. The Agway is going to look beautiful when it's done. Um, the track work, uh, it's uh, getting really good with the track work. I, I still come around the peninsula and look down at Englishtown. I can't believe how straight I got it, the, uh, the track. So, very happy with that. I think once that scene's all tied together with the Englishtown Fire Department and uh, South Main Street, it's going to look really good. Okay, so now the main line's open for continuous running. So, uh, let's talk about that uh, real quick. So. Right now, the way the layout's configured, uh, we're favoring southbound running, and that is because of the, the turnout positions. Um, with no tortoise switch machines holding spring tension, uh, the tortoises, uh, they tend to pick in the northbound position, uh, in the northbound direction. So I can do it, but I just gotta stand there and hold the, the switch points with like a, a, an X-Acto knife or something so they, the train, the, I don't get derailments. So southbound, as you can see, the, the, the train's been running through the last couple scenes and, and no issues with that. So um, that's where we're going with that. And, you know, it just adds another dynamic because now when I'm down here working, um, I can just let things go and it does it on its own. And that's, uh, that's big. It's kind of relaxing, to be honest with you. Um, some of the scenes you saw in the video, uh, you could see you know, I had the trains running while I was working and, and that's very enjoyable. And the other thing is now, you know, when I come home and just want to relax, uh, I don't have to get car cards and uh, way bills and, and switch lists and, and write out form Ds to go run a train uh, to, to do some switching. I can just come out here and we'll just let something go. So I've uh, been doing that a lot over the last week and uh, yeah, it's, it's starting to pay off benefits. Uh, I just enjoy being down here now. So And so operationally, I got to figure out how I'm going to use this new area because um, you know, right now I got the, the SA31, the SA39, I got the, uh, the uh, stage in the yard, I got the SA37 on the switch lead, and then I, I put together a, a track cleaning train over on track one. So I got to figure out how I'm going to use it because right now uh, none of the trains have been clerked from our last session. So I, got, I think what I'm going to end up doing is bringing all the trains back down, sw switching all the trains out and you know moving all the cars around and then I'll just bring up a few trains and stage them up here in the, in the 
the arrival departure area until we take them out on our op session together. Okay, so that's what we've done. So where are we going? Uh, episode 21, our next episode, we're gonna be doing the Sayreville running track um, and the Glipsy branch. Um, we're gonna do kind of like a crash course and building a shelf layout. That's pretty much what this episode is gonna be. Um, right through, we're, first I gotta, I gotta put up the backdrop, we're gonna put up a light, I'm gonna put up the valance, do the bench work, um, do the planning, um, I'm also going to do a little. I'm going to do a little photo or um, Google Earth tour and show you guys the the, uh, the area and, and what we're going to be doing. Um, do our track planning and then get the subroad bed and the track installed, and uh, in preparation for episode 22, which we'll be putting up our fascia board. Okay, so that's going to put episode 20 in the books. Um, so if you're watching this video for the first time and you like what you see, please hit the like button. Also, subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. Um, you can follow us along. We still have a lot more work to do and a lot more progress to get going. Um, check out the Facebook page and follow us on Facebook. I'm always putting up pictures of uh, daily construction and stuff like that. Otherwise, that's all I have for you this time, and we'll see you next time, episode 21. Thanks for watching. <laughs>